This right here is probably my favorite power fishing bait. It's bro popping frog, everybody knows it. And then always lay it on the front deck. You also have to have at least one finesse bait. Swacky rig, 10 pound leader, finesse bait, standard. You know, a lot of people have that on the front deck. But here's the deal. There's lots of different ways to go finesse. This is a finesse flipping jig. A lot of people flip a big bulky flipping jig. This is the Untamed Tackle Ace. This is the one that I designed. It's got a thinner skirt on it. This is a half ounce. It's got a little smaller trailer right now. This is actually a finesse flipping jig. Finessey flipping jig. So it's not labeled finesse or anything, but it's more finessey. So there's a lot of different ways to go more finesse without being 100% all the way finessey. I mean, even by some people's standards, a 10 pound leader and a five inch stick worm is not super finesse. You know, there's some people that won't, will go even way more finesse than that. And I do too at times, but for the most part, it's a spectrum between power fishing and finesse fishing. Somewhere in that, in the middle of there, like you've got from four pound test and you know, like a little bit tiny, whatever, the smallest bait you can throw. And then you've got like the biggest giant topwater, which is super aggressive. And then all throughout there, we've got things that are closer to finesse and closer to power fishing. It's all made up. It's all made up term and how you feel. And this is a more finessey flipping bait. This is the 13 Fishing Invader. Been flipping it a lot because it's tough to get a bite right now, but it's a really good bait. A little bit more slender profile, not a ton of action. A little bit more finesse. And I'm not just saying that to plug the sponsors. This is what I've had laid on the front deck, and I'm just kind of explaining to y'all what is the is my thought process behind finesse and power fishing. Some lakes you don't want to flip something this small. It'll still get bit, 100%, but you won't flip something even bigger, like the lunch bug crawl, something that's got a ton of vibration, a ton of action, a ton of draw power. When those fish are big and they're eating on giant meals, you want something that's got a lot of draw power to it. This invader is something they're gonna visually see in clear water and they're gonna say, hmm, that's smaller than me, I'll eat it. That lunch bug crawl is something big, kicks a lot, they're gonna feel it. They're going to see it from a long way away, and it's got a little bit bulkier profile, and the ones that eat that are typically going to be a little bit better quality fish. Unless it's clear, then you might not get no bites on that thing, and your bigger fish might eat a bait like this. I have a couple of different times where I automatically start to think finesse. And you can see behind me, we've got some laydown trees, all kinds of stuff like that. We're in the back of some po a pocket with some log jams in it. This is not a place I'm going to 100% come in here and just pick up a big giant flipping jig, like an eviction jig, and just flip it in there. Because certain times of the year, yeah, that's great. You know, you come in here in March, the fish are pre-spawn, you flip that big jig in there, it falls that far and they thump it. But this time of year, it's not really going to be like that. And certain types of lakes, it's not going to work like that. We had a couple of places this year, like just say St. John's River, for instance. Tidal fisheries are a prime example. I don't really know why tidal fisheries work this way, but it always does. When you go to a tidal fishery, you want to throw something finesse. Always. I mean, like a topwater frog is a really good bait down there on, on all tidal fisheries, but for the most part, you're going to be flipping a worm. That's what everybody flips on tidal fisheries. They flip a worm. They flip a five-inch stick worm. They flip, you know, like a speed worm, like the ninja worm. All that type of stuff, that's what people are flipping in the pads, they're flipping it to the trees, they're flipping it wherever. If they're cranking, they're usually cranking a 1.5 square bill, something a little bit smaller, like the Spro Fat Papa 55. If they're throwing spinner baits, they're not throwing a real big one, unless it's Rick Clun, then he catches 10 pounders, so you gotta understand. But, for the most part, tidal fisheries, you just seen people on the James River, there was just a big tournament there, I fished an open there, everybody's flipping around a drop shot, everybody's flipping around a slider head with a four and a half inch worm, and they're catching three to six pounders on it. Because on tidal rivers, for there's bigger predators than bass. Like there are literally sharks somewhere around there. Gotta be. There's dolphins. There's big fish not that far away from where the bass are. There's fish that can eat the bass relatively close. What does that mean? A bass can't just get out there and run around on a school of mullet and, and eat them. Because whenever something else comes, they're going to eat the mullet and the bass. And then that bass ain't going to be reproducing. So the only bass that are left are the ones that run up and down the bank. And the bait that's running up and down the bank are typically gonna be a little bit smaller. Like, you go to a tidal fishery and there's some big bait fish in there. But they don't really get up there super shallow on the bank all the time. 
It was on the Sabine River. There was some tiny little bait fish down there. You had to go super finesse. I was flipping a four inch worm. I was flipping baby little flipping baits, like all kinds of little stuff. And that's what works down there because they're eating little bitty crabs. They're eating little bitty bait fish because if they get off that dang bank, probably gonna be over for a three or four pound bass because there's stuff out there that will eat them. So tidal fisheries are one of the main places that when you go there, you automatically think it's gotta be finesse. And you don't want something that's gonna drag on the bottom too much because tidal fisheries have a ton of muck bottom. That's why a wacky rig works so good there. That's why a drop shot works so good there because the weight's on the bottom, but the bait's not. It, st it stands up above the, the muck a little bit. So automatically think finesse in tidal fisheries. Another place that might not get talked about a lot where I automatically think to downsize, like if I'm going somewhere flipping, that fits these characteristics, I'm automatically gonna have something like this or I'll be flipping a worm or I'll be flipping, you know, like I'll take this stick worm right here and flip it, you know, whatever it takes to get bites in that type of fishery. But it's gonna be a fishery that has stained water a big chunk of the year and then gets clear for a little bit of the year. Those are some of the toughest fisheries. Like whenever they get clear in May and June and July and August, but they're stained from like November till March, those fish just get accustomed to that clear water and it's like when, uh, accustomed to that stained water and it's like when it gets clear they're the toughest fish in the world to catch i think that when you go to a lake like hartwell or any of those lake martin lake west point those bass that live in that clear water are way easier to catch than the bass that live in muddy water that has now gotten clear those are the hardest bass to catch period and that's whenever I'm automatically going to think we got to go finesse on them. We have to throw, you know, something like a top water is usually going to catch them. But also, if you're going to flip, it's going to have to be something more finesse, a little bit smaller jig, downsize a little bit, a wacky rig, whatever. You're just going to take, it's going to take some finesse to get enough bites to do well in tournaments. And a lot of y'all aren't trying to fish big tournaments, and I understand that. But you still want to get some bites, you still want to reel some bass in, you still want to catch some. Another thing. These lakes have largemouth and spotted bass. The spotted bass usually take a little bit more finesse. They really like the wacky rig, but that wacky rig still doesn't catch them quite as good as a little shaky head, a Ned rig, a drop shot, all that type of stuff. And I go even more finesse when fishing for spotted bass because they're a little bit smaller, a little bit more particular. And a spotted bass, when they decide to eat something, they are going to eat it. That's why I don't want to throw anything that's ever going to scare them, ever going to make them feel threatened at all. I want to throw something that always they're going to identify as prey. And then spotted bass are a lot easier to catch. So go really finesse for spotted bass. Obviously really finesse for smallmouth because it's kind of the same thing. You don't ever want to scare them. But if you don't scare them and they see your bait, they're going to eat it. One more thing that I is kind of similar to the lakes that get muddy and then get clear. Those, those, are, those are brutal to fish. But... Lakes that have a lot of current where they're not pulling current. We have that a ton. Fish the Chattahoochee River a good bit. Fish the Tennessee River a good bit. When they're pulling current, you just skip this dang jig around. You flip it wherever and they bite. Like it's like they, it's like the dang dinner bell for them. For whatever reason, they bite. When the current comes off, I mean, it's not for whatever reason. You know why they bite. When that current's cut, you have a couple days in a row where they're not pulling current. The first day is the worst. The first day when they're not pulling current, that's the worst. But... That's whenever you have to go finesse. You gotta go into it with the mindset of, hey, they're not just gonna go bite a uh, vibrating jig just winding it down the bank. This ain't the time for that. This is whenever you have to go finesse. You have to pick up your little shaky heads and flip it, you know, to isolate a cover. You gotta drag that shaky head down, lay down trees. Instead of flipping a big jig in there, now it's time to throw a shaky head and drag it. All that type of stuff is what plays into, you know, when you need to be finesse. And I guess to summarize that, whenever I think to go finesse, it's whenever the conditions are bad for power fishing on lakes where they're typically good. Like we go to Lake Martin, you can power fish all year round, catch a bunch of fish all the time because that lake is always clear. It's got a ton of fish in it and they just always seem to bite. Now you might not be on the, on the winning deal, but you can always get some bites power fishing all the time. But those lakes where there are good conditions sometimes, but it's not today, those are the ones where you better go into it with a thought process. We got to adjust and we have got to go finesse. So that's kind of the way that I break it down. There's obviously a little more nuance to it than that. Some fisheries just, the fish tend to want to eat smaller baits, period. I don't know why. I don't know if it's like a lack of gizzard shad, like the lake I'm on today. There's gizzard shad in here. There's big giant shad in here, but they seem to not want to eat big baits. They seem to want to eat a little more finessey baits. I don't know why just how this lake is but it's also a lake that gets stained for a lot of the year 
and then clear for a lot of the year. Like half the year's clear, half the year's stain, and it's kind of tough. But anyways, that's how I break it down. If the conditions are typically good and they're bad today, you better think finesse and you better think it quick or you're gonna fall behind. So that's kind of my thought process on it. Let me know how y'all adjust. If y'all do something different than me, if y'all got some baits y'all throw whenever it's tough and you need to go finesse, what's your favorite finesse setup? Or if you've got a power fishing bait that seems to catch them whenever they are not biting the traditional ones, let me know that too, because I might have one tied on shortly, if you tell me what it is. But appreciate it, guys. Appreciate y'all watching the video. Leave me a comment down below. And uh, about to go back fishing and hopefully not have to finesse them. <laughs>